To find the ship symbol is just an astounding thing. You know, any ship's figurehead really symbolizes the spirit of that ship. And to find one from almost 500 years ago is quite astounding. To, to have that emotional connection to the crew and the people of the Mary Rose. The uh, figurehead or the, the billet head, this would have been mounted right at the front of the ship and uh, it had become quite heavily eroded in the years after the ship sank. So it was down on the seabed but because the billet head wasn't buried in the mud, um, it, the surface became eroded. I had the pleasure of, of directing the diving on site that happened between 2003 and 2005, which was funded by the Ministry of Defence because they wanted to bring two new aircraft carriers um, into Portsmouth Harbour and the, the channel that is currently used has a number of bends in it and they thought it was going to be too challenging for these large aircraft carriers. So the area that they chose actually clipped the historic wreck circle of the Mary Rose. So we put together a project that looked specifically for the bow area of the Mary Rose, the bow castle, because we'd cut off part of the timbers at the front of the ship where they began to erode away. And we were searching for what was left to be absolutely sure that if these, the channel went ahead, they wouldn't leave anything on the seabed that, or destroy anything on the seabed either by the channel or by any change in sedimentation or, or anything to do with the seabed movement as a result of it. And in doing so, we found loads of things to the, to the front of the ship, stuff we hadn't expected, including the stem timber, which is a big timber that comes from the, the keel, the bottom of the ship, and comes up the front, and it defines the length of the ship. So that's really important now. We brought that up in 2005. And part of the port side structure, which had been broken off with it, and we'd never had any of that before. So that's a first, but uh, we've had to leave that buried within the seabed because we haven't had the, the funds to lift it. So that's well cared for. But associated with that were about five or six hundred timbers, of which one, we didn't, we didn't recognize underwater that was carved, but came up and as it was being hosed down on the deck, you thought, my goodness, that's like a big lollipop, a stalk with a, a roundel on the end of it. And it is definitely carved and it looks like it's got a central raised bit and, and bits around the edge. And we thought, my goodness, is that the, the rose carving, which is on the front of the only known picture we have of the Mary Rose, one of the largest of the 20 great ships. And there, above the bowsprit, is this thing poking out the front, which is a red and yellow um, wooden object with Tudor rose painted on each side. Or we, it's shown on one side only, and one assumes it's on the other side. And that's exactly what this carving has. It's got uh, the evidence for something carved on both sides, which thankfully now we know it, is a Tudor rose and then the angles because of the fixing points the angle that it would have been held in would have been at about 18 degrees to the horizontal which again is very similar to the painting so we think we found a proto figurehead or a ship's emblem and that associates the name of the Mary Rose the ship with the emblem and that is one of the earliest found certainly in England. Archaeological artifacts sometimes don't really look uh, as they did when they were new, when they were original. Um, and the billet head is one of those things that needs some interpretation. It needs some uh, uh, demonstration of what it is to a general public. Some of the artifacts from the Mary Rose are in absolutely pristine condition. Um, consequently, they need far less interpretation because we all know what they are. We can understand what a, a drinking vessel is. We can understand what a wooden bowl is. But when we have something that's slightly eroded um, and doesn't really uh, shine out as though it were a new object, it needs some interpretation. It needs some additional visualizing. We used three different techniques. Uh, we used laser scanning, where we have literally a laser going over the surface of the artifact and then that being converted into a model that we can use in the computer. We also used a plain old camera, uh, a digital SLR that you would use um, in any other area that and we then took loads of overlapping images and that enables to use a technique called structure from motion which is a specialized form of photogrammetry we can then equally reconstruct a model but also get the texture of that model um, for post-production. 
what I've done is to photograph the, uh, the artifact, the, the ship's billet head, uh, using a very oblique light source so that that reveals the uh, relief of the surface, making it possible to discern the original pattern and the carving of the Tudor Rose. This project has revealed what we think is what the badge of the Mary Rose would have looked like, which is an emblem. It's basically a carving with a wonderful Tudor rose on it, which was vestigial to say the least when we first brought it up in 2005. And through all of the computer enhancements and photogrammetry, we've actually finally got a picture of, of what it might have looked like. And it's remarkably like the Tudor rose emblem, which is emblazoned on a number of our bronze guns. My uh, kind of role in the, in the Billet Head project was taking the uh, the 2D uh, sketches of the billet head um, and coupled with the, uh, the shadow photography and things like that to, uh, to create a, a 3D model um, and then apply some appropriate textures and some appropriate uh, kind of weathering effects to give an impression of um, a version of the billet head as it would have uh, appeared when it was in service on the Mary Rose. So obviously working with something as heavily eroded as the, the billet head is, um, it's always going to be difficult to uh, balance accurate reinterpretation with uh, kind of the limitations of the information that's available. Um, so what we what we had was um, accurate measurements of the length and the kind of depth of the billet head as it was found, um, coupled with um, kind of the relief data from the shadow photography. So we could work out roughly where the kind of um, indentations and the heights were. Um, and one side of the object had a much uh, a much better kind of preserved um, rose emblem that was apparent. Using that as kind of depth data and then flipping it over to the other side gave us a reason reasonable example of how large the actual object was. And then for the internal structure, so some of the drilled holes were still uh, visible, um, some of them the top surface had kind of eroded away a little bit. So again, working with the most likely interpretation given the function of the billet head at the front of the ship um, and what those holes might have been used for, that was the basis for then what the, the 3D model turned out like. Visualisation technologies have changed so much. When I was working as photographer on the Mary Rose, it was all film-based, silver-based photography. You could create images of things, you could record things, but you couldn't enhance those images. You couldn't create three-dimensional models that would allow um, viewers to really understand what, what an object was about, to see how it fitted into things in a three-dimensional space. So the advancing technology of visualisation methods has made all sorts of things possible that weren't previously. We've always had a close association with Portsmouth University and earlier this year we had a number of seminars where, where um, heads of various departments came to the Mary Rose Trust and we talked about various things we could do. And in one of them we took one of the senior lecturers from Creative Technologies into uh, our reserve collection and I just happened to show him this carving and said, say, you know, it'd be really nice to recreate this because it, it's a key part of the story. You know, it's almost like the last object to be found and there it is, it's the name of the ship. And it was obviously one of the first things to go on, on the ship and it was found during our last major excavation. And um, he said, leave it with me, we'll see what we can do. And that's when the ball started rolling. With, with the revolution we're currently having in technology and particularly in things like virtual reality and visualization software, manipulation in software, we're now at a stage where instead of just going, here's a rendered picture that you can have a look at, we've now got the facility to actually take this artifact and actually put it into a, another domain where people can actually now manipulate it. They can actually put the hands effectively or a mouse, computer mouse into the space and turn it around and actually have a look at that 3D structure as though they're actually handling the actual object itself. Which means we can actually start to see relationships from certain parts of the structure that you wouldn't just see if you looked at photographs. And I think it's that, that, that it draws out a whole load of new exciting elements. There are things that when we were making this model, we did not expect to find. We didn't expect to be doing a huge amount of interpretation on top of it. We were trying to do a reconstruction. But it became a mini time team. We were actually sitting there going, there are holes, there are structures here, they have clear purpose. And we initially didn't know what those were. And we had to go back to the literature and find out what might have been involved. And that's become really quite exciting. And you can't do that sometimes just from the imagery alone. And to actually be able to put that into public domain so the public can actually go, yes, I can see what you mean, but if I turn it around and manipulate it this way and I can have a look at all the different surfaces, I get to see something that I can't just see from the cabinet itself. 
Uh, what has surprised us is the detail that we got of the inside of the object. So for us as archaeologists, we want to try and work out how it fits into the structure. And so by the work that's been done at, at the University of Portsmouth, we've been able to look inside it and look at the fixing holes far better than we would have been able to just by poking a light down them or poking a piece of string down one side or the other. So I think that's going to certainly help in the future because obviously the next stage is to try and, and make a copy of it and then give it to somebody who's experienced in building replica boats that do have figureheads or proto figureheads and see how we could fit it in. And then what we need to do is go back to the many, many timbers we lifted between 2003 and 2005 that were in the same area, which is the broken bow castle of the Mary Rose, as we found the uh, emblem and see whether we can find anything that it might fit into or be part of. So I think that's, that's the next challenge for us as archaeologists in the Mary Rose Trust.